so our next second talk will be on a very very important topic uh, the uniqueness and spiritual glory of the ramakrishna order but this is actually what uh, expansion or maybe uh, the expansion of the ramakrishna movement movement really means as i said history is the expansion of activities and external things but the uniqueness of the ramakrishna order is in its spiritual glory the internal development the unfoldment of the divinity which is within so this is a very good theme and i would request swami muktidanand ji to speak on this theme but before that i'll give a very brief introduction so swami muktidanand ji maharaj as you all know we have uh, had him uh, in a previous webinar as well he is the adhyaksha of sri ramakrishna ashrama mysore and also one of the trustees of the ramakrishna entire ramakrishna martyr mission so he is a post graduate in science from mumbai university bombay university and he joined the ramakrishna ashram at mysore in 82 so he is there for a very very long time for a brief period he was in some other centers but he has been in mysore has done wonderful work he is initiated by revered swami vireshwaranand ji maharaj and had his sanyasa diksha from revered swami bhuteshan ji maharaj in the year 1993 so he has served at sri ramakrishna vidyashala which is a premier residential educational institute of our mysore ashrama for over two decades and as chief administrator for 16 years so he had a, he has a wonderful experience with students he has molded so many students through his personal uh, guidance and contact and many of them have uh, have been very successful in life very noble citizens they become noble citizens so subsequently after serving mysore for a very long time he was the adhyaksha of mumbai he served as the adhyaksha of mumbai and also advait ashrama mayavati on which we will be uh, hearing the last talk of our three day webinar will be on advait ashrama mayavati a confluence of the east and the west where his savior had a long a lot to contribute so he had initiated the renovation which has now just been completed he initiated undertook a wonderful uh, job of preserving as it is the original building which swami where swami vivekananda stayed he visited mayavati it was started when he was still alive just before his ma samadhi visited and he stayed that building has been renovated and uh, it's one of the dream centers of swami uh, vivekananda and uh, swami muktidan ji was the adhyaksha head of advait ashrama also so he has contributed many articles in monthly journals like prabuddha bharata vedanta kesari our kannada magazine vivek prabha and he has a special grounding being associated with students for such a long time education indian philosophy yoga psychology indian culture so in he has also given a series of talks which are very popular chintana radio program, uh, which are uh, which is organized by uh, akashwani mysore it's a radio program chintana so he has given a series of talks in that uh, on radio as well and he has been conducting guided meditation classes for students and spiritual seekers for years now and also his specialty is as i said education personality development uh science of worship and such other subjects for students professionals in various forums and functions held in different parts of karnataka in india so i would now request swami uh muktidanand ji to speak on this very important theme the uniqueness and spiritual glory of the ramakrishna order over to swami muktidanand ji thank you sarvastan ji maharaj um indeed very glad to be with you all this evening In, to participate in this program arranged by ramakrishna vedanta center london burnen this three days webinar in which we are going to discuss the various aspects of 
Ramakrishna Vivekananda Movement and Ramakrishna Mission, which has completed 125 years. The May 1st was the foundation day. And to commemorate that, they all gathered together and reflect over such a great spiritual, cultural moment of a worldwide significance. Its contribution to the well-being of mankind is enormous. Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement in just 125 years has spread all over the world in both the hemispheres. Its qualitative analysis is a matter of really a significant study. Human welfare, human evolution, human well being, and Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement and the mission need to be correlated and studied. We all human beings living on this planet have this death bound body. And to know our real nature behind the body, mind, and ego is called a spirituality. And that spirituality is the center of the Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement and Ramakrishna mission. The foundation of the Ramakrishna mission is mystical spiritual experiences of a wide range that Sri Ramakrishna had, right from the Kali Darshan and the, 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 the vision of many gods and goddesses, the anthropomorphic divine forms, as well as his experience of Vedanta, the ultimate Nirvikalpa Samadhi, then of a non-dual nature. And coupled with this, he was so compassionate to, to evolve a spiritual movement which is devoid of any sectarianism. It is all embracing. It accommodates everybody. It is all inclusive. That was the command of Sri Ramakrishna to his dear disciple Narendra Nath that to see that this movement does not get embroiled in any sectarianism. So the Ramakrishna movement is one whose canvas, whose mosaic is such that it welcomes everybody, it rejects none. It is deeply spiritual in the sense everybody wants to know the truth of our being before we cast off this mortal coil. So Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, and Sharada Devi, who are the central spiritual figures, the luminaries of a, a divine origin. But it is very historical and not mythical or mythological. Ramakrishna demonstrated the the truth of spirituality, its practicality, its validity, its relevance to the amidst the glare of the Calcutta people sitting in the 
that room of Dakshineshwar, radiating spirituality to all over the world. So he practiced different aspects of Hindu religion and had a first-hand experience of the divine, the mystical experience of the divine, and also tried to practice and experience the divinity through Christianity and Islam in his own way and demonstrated to the world Jato Mat Tato Pat. So there are as many paths as there are so many minds. Divinity is one, God is one, and all can reach Him if you follow certain spiritual discipline and principles. So he made the, the spiritual experience of God, which is the strength of and the crown of any spiritual, global, socio-cultural movement. And it is the strength of the, 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 the Ramakrishna order that in these recent decades, recent history within 125 years, we have been able to get about thousands of renunciates who joined the order. The present strength may be perhaps 1,600 to 700. And our centers may be around all over the world, including India, may be around 200 and 15 or 20, 25. And the millions of people in the Buddha hemispheres are looking out for a, a real practical non-sectarian spiritual ideal where there is scope for self-actualization as well as for self-transcendence. It is the genius of Swami Vivekananda who gave such a wonderful, unique, broad-based, open-ended ideal to the Ramakrishna movement, namely the twin ideals, <coughs> Atmano Mokshartam, Jagat Hita Echa. That is self-transcendence and self-actualization of the highest order. Atmano Mokshartha is the transcending ourselves and experiencing the divinity. That is the, the purpose of the human existence. Another is doing good to the world, well-being of the world, thinking that God himself dwells in, in this world as Antaryamin, as Sarvantaryamin. So, this kind of a broad-based ideal wherein you have a concept of highest self-transcendence and self-actualization means objective world, whatever you see, ensuring their welfare. So these are the twin ideal of the Ramakrishna movement. The Ramakrishna movement is its origin and development is a matter of recent history which is authentically recorded and it is not mythological and not imaginary, but real fact of recent times. Another unique feature of the Ramakrishna movement is its vast spiritual vision, progressive and all-inclusive cultural and spiritual approach. One has to study deeply the life and ideas and ideals put forth in the luminous Ramakrishna's life 
and Swami Vivekananda's life and Holy Mother Sharada Devi's life. They are like the lighthouse to mankind as they lived in the recent history. The spiritual truth, the veracity of the, the spiritual disciplines and spiritual principles are tested in the lives of these great luminaries and also later they had other 15 direct disciples and hundreds of thousands of Ramakrishna Vivekananda followers have had a different types of spiritual experience. And apart from that, it is not that we are just rustic and monastic and endemic to our monasticism. Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement stretches out all over and conducts relief work whenever there is a calamity, whenever there is a need, it reaches out to the distant tribals in the remote villages who are untouched by the civilizational advantages like Narayan, Abhujmal in Narayanpur. It also takes care of the elite intellectuals and also all those who are in between. So Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement can cater to the needs of all strata of the society, all levels of intellectuals, on all colors and shades of the human existence. That is why and compassion of Sri Ramakrishna is something which is very, very noteworthy. Swami Vivekananda in his poem, he says, his compassion ranges from Achandala Pratihatarayo Yasya Prema Pravaha. So he is, his love and compassion is touching the lives of the remotest, the backward people, and also the most advanced people in the cosmopolitan cities. So this is the range of the Ramakrishna movement. And just in 125 years, whatever has unfolded, whatever has unfurled, it is time that we, during this 125 years of the, the spread of the movement, we are commemorating the, the foundation day of the Ramakrishna movement. And it is time that we really make a special analyc analytical study and qualitative analysis of the Ramakrishna movement as compared to the many other socio-cultural and uh, other religious movements all over the new religious movements all over the world. Ramakrishna mission is believes in a broad-based existence and not in regimentation. Ramakrishna mission is an instrument of Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda and Holy Mother, a global instrument which is struggling to translate and give expression to the vast and deep life of the Holy Trio. In these 125 years, what we have, we have been able to achieve needs to be assessed and we must look forward to see how this movement can reach every nook and corner of the globe. Such are, is the potential, such are the potentials of this movement that there are about 12 syntheses we can identify in the Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement in Ramakrishna mission. 
they are synthesis between ancient and modern secular and spiritual work and worship science and religion east and west knowledge and devotion tradition and innovation faith and reason intellect and emotion universalism and patriotism liberation and well being of the world philosophy and practice we can see a number of synthesis swami ji's vision right from the cave days to the modern times swami ji looked at the whole gamut of the human existence with a futuristic vision with the present day relevance and every bit of knowledge which has emerged in the human mind right from the cave days to the modern times he has integrated he has synthesized and he has made into a, a very very what is called as the global knowledge body where all essentials are taken into account rejecting all the non essentials giving importance to the that which transforms and that which take the humanity forward that which lift the human mind and the heart those ideas are put together in the ramakrishna movement and this kind of a synthesis of the best of the past best of the past knowledge of humanity is is interwoven here into a new knowledge body which has present day relevance and futuristic vision so ramkrishna mission is not just a social service and extrovert organization we are supposed to look within ourselves and experience the truth of our being that is the atmano moksha simultaneously when you are on the journey of of an inner discovery of the divinity you also simultaneously reach out to the people around considering that the divinity that we are trying to see within is also there without in everybody so every work becomes a worship if it is done in a proper perspective as demonstrated by ramakrishna vivekananda and holy mother and that is what is called as practical vedanta spirituality in the ramakrishna mission is not static it is very dynamic yet we have we have centers which can cater to the need of the urban modern people with modern gadgets and we too have centers in the deep jungles of himalayas or in villages where rustic pure ancient gurukula type of life is also lived so wide range of the, that mosaic of the ramkrishna mission is very unique and this is a genius of swami vivekananda who has masterminded the the knowledge the life that is around the world by directly encountering the entire global life like a palm of his hand soon after his sanyasa he went around india as a parivrajaka and studied the the life and the culture 
and the actual the situation of the people, not from books, but directly encountering and seeing life, and meeting people from beggars to kings. Similarly, went around the world, saw the global life, the panorama of the global life, and understood how and where the humanity is progressing. What are the forces which are at work? What are the historical forces which are still working on us? And how to we make, how we are to make a, a new history based on this great ideal, the highest ideal any human beings can have, that is self-transcendence and self-actualization, which means in, in Swamiji's words, Atmano Mukshartam and Jagat Hitayacha. Highest level of self-transcendence, highest pinnacle of self-actualization is the goal of the human beings. As an individual, as a society, we need to set up an ideal society where spirituality, which is search for truth of our own existence, and the well-being of the people are commingled and integrated and made into our lifestyle, made into our religion, made into our spiritual practice, made into a way of life even in the secular area. So this is the uniqueness of the Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement, which is having its own great spiritual glory. Spirituality is, insepar is inseparable from the Ramakrishna movement. Though externally we do a lot of work, we construct buildings, we do a lot of service and activities, it is buzzing with a lot of activities, but underneath the spirituality is smoldering. The strength of the Ramakrishna order is spirituality and search for truth and self-actualization. The, the, the external service is the expression of the, the spirituality. And uh, Ramakrishna has, and Vivekananda and Sharada Devi have actually set up in such a broad-based ideal. Even the householders can really try to reach this twin ideal that self-realization as well as service to the, the, the mankind. So the Rishi ideal of the ancient, uh, our Vedic time, where Rishis, most of the Rishis were married, but they had the goal of self-transcendence to know the truth right from their early boyhood days. Their education was in closely intertwined both secular and spiritual. And they passed through the, the youth, the householders, the life, and later they got delved deep into the spiritual search at the frag end of their life and became the rishis and discovered the truth. This is a complete, total life perspective. Both secular and spiritual are commingled. Ramakrishna, by marrying Sharada Devi, also sanctified the household and upheld the ideal of householder who constitute 99% of the human population. So Ramakrishna movement caters to the spiritual and secular well-being of all the family people. Spiritualizing family life is a very important part of the um, Ramakrishna movement. That is why millions of families are, are, are connected to Ramakrishna movement and participate in our uh, spiritual journey and also our programs of doing good to the humanity by varieties of service activity. So I'm glad that uh, uh, the London Center is organizing such a wonderful webinar uh, to commemorate 
the 125th year of the foundation day of the Ramakrishna mission by arranging the talks by, by monks who are in the different parts of the globe. I suppose you already heard yesterday three talks and today perhaps this is the second talk, but more talk is going to be held now and tomorrow again three more talks from uh, the monks who hail from different countries and different region and they will definitely unfold the service activity, the dynamics, the spirituality of the Ramakrishna Vivekananda movement, the Ramakrishna mission and place before all the audience and the world over the truth of the Ramakrishna movement. Uh, so uh, I conclude here and thank Swami Sarvastanandaji Maharaj for giving me an opportunity to be with you all this evening. Maharaj, we have uh, time. You can please continue. We are we just, uh, you can speak for another. There are a few questions, but yes. I think uh, they're not. Uh, Achha, there is one question, uh, but still you continue, Maharaj, if you like for another 10 minutes. Oh, I can conti continue. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. That I should not exceed the time. No, 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 no. There is, there are still, there is 29 minutes you have and yes. uh, leaving maybe some 10 minutes for question answers. You can please continue. Okay. Okay. You see, talking about this uniqueness of this Ramakrishna movement, which has emerged from West Bengal of India under the inspiring foundational life of a God realized luminaries is a unique phenomena in the world history. If you have to see the past spiritual religious movements and the Ramakrishna movement, its authentic, authentic spiritual base, tapasya, its way in which penetrates into the life of the people with the Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga. And as a part of the Karma Yoga, we undertake all kinds of service activities, right from hospitals, schools, orphanages, flood and famine relief for old age homes, and so on. A varieties of service activities for the well-being of the people is undertaken by Ramakrishna Mission in such a systematic, perfect manner with perfect accountability following the law of the land of every country, especially in India. So, it is not that we are only shut inside the ashrama and leading an ascetic life of a Himalayan style. We are there out in the world amidst people. Thereby driving home to the people that spirituality can be commingled with activity. Spiritual transformation is possible even amidst family life, amidst household life by doing the activity. This is the one of the important message of the Ramakrishna movement. It is not simply restricted to the rustic spirituality 
or the endemic spirituality, it is lends itself to the workaday world, to the common people, to have a spiritual ideal in their heart along with their day-to-day -day duties and responsibilities. This is a unique uh, thrust and contribution, especially of uh, Swami Vivekananda through his philosophy of practical Vedanta. And this, the, the key idea, the, the basic idea for which was given to him by none other than his guru, Sri Ramakrishna, Ramahumsa, who, who told him that Shiva Jnana Jiva Seva idea, who, who initiated Swami Vivekananda into Shiva Bhave Jiva Seva ideal, that to consider working for any other individual is only serving God in man. This ideal of practical Vedanta through a, 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 a new karma yoga. Bhagavad Gita also tells yat karoshi, yat ashnasi, yat jihosi, yadasi, yat so every work can be offered to the divine and our spiritual journey can be continued even amidst the din and bustle of the day-to-day -day work. Provided we have that awareness, we have that consciousness, we have that sensitivity and we have the goal-orientedness and we have that inner spiritual aspiration to know the truth. Wanting to know the truth in and through all the course of life. This is the speciality of uh, uh, Ramakrishna movement where the sedentary tapas, tapas doing sitting in one place for a number of hours and the dynamic tapas of having that awareness within and seeing that same divine everywhere and trying to do the work for the well-being of the world. This is very well demonstrated through our mission activities. We are all in the particular stages of development. We don't claim that everything that we do it is, is, is perfect, but we are striving and struggling to stretch ourselves to reach out to the world in world through service and also actualize our spiritual ideal by our own inner sadhana. So internal spiritual sadhana and external service, which also has to be the expression of the sadhana, uh, that spiritual practice. So this these two poles are connected by the connection of the karma, that is karma yoga, and the jnana yoga and the bhakti yoga are integrated. Tapas and the work, jnana and the work, bhakti and service, they're all connected in the Ramakrishna movement. That is why it is so dynamic. That is why it is vibrant. That is why it is luminous and angularities of the every personalities are rounded off by in the field of work. The inner samskaras which are expressed and seen and transformed in the spiritualized uh, activities of the mission. So, uh, the transformation at a different level has to take place. The individual human personality, as well as the collective society, we are all striving for a transformation, for a to evolve ourselves into a, a better human beings who need to know that 
the truth of our personality having had the death bound body so this is the the call of the evolution what is this twin ideal atmanam mokshartam jagadita cha is the call of the human evolution spiritual evolution and without the, the spirituality has to go hand in hand with the day to day life in the world the material life in the world so that is what swami vivekananda has been striving how we spirituality can be very you know meaningfully blended with the day to day natural life of the people in the world that is the one of the greatest contribution of the ramakrishna order and which needs to be studied and taken to its logical end in the years to come so that is the well, atmana mokshartham and jagadhita cha is not just uh, this uh, we uh, words we utter it is it is very deep is very vast is as deep as the ocean as as vast as the sky it is the ultimate goal of mankind that that is if at all mankind can have the uh, highest goal and whatever is the highest goal that can it revolve it can evolve around only these twin ideal uh, with this i conclude once again um, uh, thanking sarvastanand ji for giving me another 10 minutes uh, maraj there is one more question one question we have still we have time so you please continue our uh, swami <laughs> satyamayanand ji will be joining only after 20 minutes but there is a very interesting question which is on comparative religion based on what you said just now uh, there is a question from uk united kingdom that are we to understand that you are encouraging the setting up of a new comparative study between the rkm and ramkrishna mission and the other social cultural organizations or is there a study which has already been started i do not like to you know have an approach which will hurt anybody by comparison uh, or this kind of a one up manship and all that but a qualitative study of the truth of the ramkrishna mission in the last 125 years of its history entire human history of the past and the present dispensations of various spiritual movement and the future of the what kind of a society human beings would like to you know create in future see life is not only the present nor it is the past from the past and present we lead to it lead to a, a, a kind of future now we have seen um, what was some 5000 years ago or 2000 1000 years ago with respect to religion spirituality family life the global life and the nations national life of every country and where the human life is gradually proceeding and getting converged what is the crying need of humanity if any movement that fulfills that the crying need the basic need the real need of the mankind that movement naturally by the by the law of the nature it will flourish because people want it that which takes the people forward that is why if you make a qualitative analysis of the various spiritual movement ram krishna mission is non sectarian and uh, its mosaic is very very open so it welcomes into its bosom without a disturbing any other religion and any other spiritual dispensation 
yet they can be a part of the Ramakrishna movement. That is the beauty of it. We do not debase people from their roots. On the contrary, we want them to understand their roots properly and separate the grain from the chaff, essential, non-essential, and find out what exactly helps each one to go forward as per the call of the human destiny to know the truth of our being and the well-being of the human society. Just many isms come and go and all that. Everything is an experiment by the human psyche on this uh, human planet. Swamiji says, no, uh, what is that? Uh, spirituality is a reading of uh, spirit into the matter. See, Swamiji is great saying it is re it, 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 progressive it, reading of matter of spirit into matter. Progressive uh, reading. Spirit, progress, progressive reading of the spirit into the matter. What a beautiful sta statement. We need to do a research on this. What is, what is progressive reading of the spirit into the matter? Atmana Mokshartam Jagadhi Thayacha. You just, second thing, Swamiji says that society is greatest where highest truth become practical. That society is greatest where highest truth become practical. The practice of the spirituality means search for truth. Spirituality is equivalent to search for truth. It is not an ism or it is not something like a, uh, you know, a narrow a knowledge body. It is, it is the, 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 the uh, it carries with it the entire humanity's progressive march towards the truth because we are all death bound. And that which is beyond the death and that which is before the death and that which is inside us when the body is hanging on, all the three needs to be connected and we need to know the truth. The human purpose of the human intellect is not to get caught in this world and enjoy the world, but doing, but ensuring the welfare of everybody, well-being of everybody, yet we have to go for self-transcendence. When the body is hanging itself, we have to know what the ultimate reality is. That is the challenge or the call of the destiny uh, and the, the call of the evolution of the human intellect. Intellect will, is not meant for, see, just as science is exploring, the truth of the objective world. Spirituality is the internal science, subjective science, which is exploring the subjective spiritual truth of the mankind or individual life. So these both have to be uh, harmonized. So Ramakrishna mission, especially the life of Holy Trio, has lot many things to contribute for the well-being of the mankind and the spiritual journey of the mankind in the decades and centuries to come. This is what we are trying to say something without comparing. And, and every spiritual organization is important. Let it contribute its best and we, we, can, we are all co-travelers on the, on the vast canvas of spirituality to go forward and take the humanity forward. This is what I feel uh, we should reflect and understand uh, with the reference to this Ramakrishna movement and the, the global, the humanistic need of the entire humanity uh, and truth, spirituality, which is there or whatever is the essential thing, which is there in every religion, every body of knowledge, every sect is to be taken out. It is to be integrated. It is to be synthesized. Essentials are to be taken in, and non-essentials are to be taken as to, uh, uh, have to just uh, be left behind. Yeah, but there is one more question which says you just mentioned that uh, service is a kind of tapasya in the Ramakrishna order, and that mm -hmm. it can lead to the highest goal. So, mm -hmm. does this highest goal or the goal, intermediate goal, or the ultimate goal vary according to time and space? See, what we should try is actually Dariva Prajna Karma Yajna. 
Daiva Prajna Karma Yajna uh, means uh, spiritual awareness is primary, which is the, the core of our being, which Ramakrishna calls that alone is Vastu, that alone is real. We should have that as our central focus and then go into the world and do our work as offering to the, the divine which, is as a, which manifested as a world or virata. This is what is called the concept called yajna. Karma has to be transformed into offering to the divine. There is a, a huge cosmic forces are working and we can only be a part of that. We should be in harmony with the cosmic yajna or the work that is happening. And we, if to the extent that we are in tune with the cosmic process, we, we survive, we, 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 we progress. Otherwise, we regress. This, this is what, that is what the meaning of yajnartha karmano anyatra lokoyam karma vandana. If you are a part of the give and take of the whole universal process, then you will go forward. If you impede the, the global yajna, that is the work and activity that is going on from little atom and electron movement to the cosmic the, the movement of the, the stars and the planets and all that, and the subtler world beyond the known material world of uh, uh, this Milky Way and galaxy, there is a subtler, subtler world. Just as we see the sense-bound material world, beyond the senses, there is an existence. We, our existence is bound by the Indriya Sannikarsha Jnana. But there is a world which is beyond the human comprehension. That human intellect can penetrate we have such hidden ability within us, which is called as Chaitya Purusha. Brahmanandaji also says, the, deep inside us, there is a spiritual mind, a great mind, which is in the form of a bud, like a parachute in a folded form. Whenever with our spiritual practice and, and when expansioning the, our intellectual capabilities, we will be able to unfurl that inner capability of the mind and able to become a superman and do much, much greater things in the world as per the call of the human destiny. This is what uh, uh, I think we, we, we can uh, place before the people a little bit of uh, the sharing of our thinking. I think then we'll conclude. Uh, there is one more last question, Maharaj, yes. which where uh, uh, somebody is asking for suggestions how to uh, uh, solve this problem of intolerance, which is leading to conflict in the world, especially through the medium of education. When children are at school, how to preach these universal ideas in a very simple way so that they grow up, they don't uh, end up um, quarreling with each other and uh, having intolerance in their behavior. See, intolerance is the result of narrow, bigoted, short-term ideas infused into the children's and youth mind. It is complete, something like a brainwashing the mind and limiting the mental horizons. So, if you have to expand the, the mental horizon and intellectual uh, expanse of an individual, he has to be taught right from the childhood, the universal ideas, and he must have a questioning mind, the search for truth, wanting to know the truth, and where lies the real well-being of the human society. All these questions have to be, all these concepts have to be taught to the child. Satyam Vada 
dharmam chara all those things you know which which has made uh, this uh, our culture of the the the, the the eastern culture so broad based uh, not restricted to any particular anthropomorphic form and not limiting the human mind and human possibilities so these are the things are to be taught to the children through right education and then only uh, perhaps the children when they become adult they will have a broad based ideas and a, a, a vast broad based mind where they can embrace and accommodate everybody but the last question we have about 5 minutes left uh, swami satyamayanand ji is already there <laughs> with us uh, but this last question uh, uh, is about uh, is asked by somebody from america from san francisco the question is about sri ramakrishna why did uh, Swami Vivekananda say he is quoting the exact sentence. No one before in India became a Christian, a Mohammedan, and a Vaishnava by turns. So he wants you to just comment on this statement. What did Swami Ji mean that Sri Ram Krishna became a Christian? Of course, it refers to his sadhana, but what is its significance to become a Christian, Mohammedan, and a Vaishnava in turn? I mean, by turns. No. Ram Krishna did not become an any any uh, vaishnava or christian or muslim his entire being was hungering to know the truth to the various path which the earlier uh, history has shown the religious history has shown so he experienced the divine through the various paths of the indian spiritual culture then he so the the islam and the other semitic religions around they to worship god and how do they here tremendous curiosity to know god through the other path it's like a, you monotonously eat a particular dish you like to eat a one more new dish which 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 you would like experiment and see similarly he wanted to know how by following the islamic path also one can experience god and then he did not become a christian or a muslim or a hindu that he was a seeker of truth he was a spiritual master and his life was totally open to know the truth to any path he wanted to know the ultimate reality and how various human beings can you know tread that path and and reach the reach that goal and he discovered that all path lead to the same goal and and there is a one god and everybody is in different stages of spiritual development and this is what they discover he did not uh, become a one to the other and other religion it is not a, a he, he did not, he was not putting on different coats of uh, vaishnava and islam and christianity he was uh, his core being was in search of truth and he adapted uh, christianity to know the truth he adapted islam to know the truth he adapted different sects of hinduism or parts of hinduism to know the truth truth was his goal god was his goal divinity was his goal if every religious seeker world over aspires to know the divine through their respective path there is no religious conflict and there is no bigotry all religions meet in the common vestibule of meditation and seeking god when you begin to seek god not identify the religion as a number game or a particular body of a religious organization or a religious sect but if you use the religion and every sect as a path to know god that is the broad mindedness we need to inculcate in our children and the children of the entire world all children of the world should be taught to seek god to their respective religion to seek god through respective religion not to use religion for any other purpose other than seeking god 
Thank you, Maharaj. You have timed it to perfection. We are exactly 5.30. You have concluded. <laughs> wonderful timing. So we thank you, Maharaj, once again for this wonderful explanation of a very important theme, the uniqueness and the spiritual glory of the Ramakrishna mission. And the fact that it is not the quantitative analysis, but it is an unfoldment of the spiritual power of Sri Ramakrishna that makes our <coughs> order unique. And when it manifests itself through the successive disciples, both monastic as well as householders, how it is slowly unfolding. We had a wonderful uh, discussion. Uh, we heard a wonderful discussion and you answered some very nice. We hope to see you again. This whole year we'll be celebrating this 125th anniversary. Uh, it gives us an opportunity. Like see now we have Swami Satyamayanji who will represent the entire North American uh, yeah. continent and uh, the, which had so many centers. In fact, uh, I, I could not be improper to say that the Ramakrishna movement had its first center in New York, which is in the West. Later on, Belur Mutt Association is in first on, uh, we registered the organization 1st May 1897. So officially, I think there was a center in America even before in 1894. Yeah. It is uh, very nice of you to have uh, organized this webinar by calling the Swamiji's from different countries, especially in the context of the, uh, you know, commemoration of the Foundation Day of the Ramakrishna Order, yes. so that yes. the global view can be put together to understand the Ramakrishna movement. It's a, a very nicely organized, a very thoughtful of you to have organized such a program. So thank, thank you, you Maharaj Pranams, once again. Thank you for ah, participating. Thank you. Thank you.